Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here, and welcome to my channel. So in this channel, we solve a lot of algorithms and we go over a lot of lead code questions. So today I'm gonna to talk about how you can start with lead code. So I get this question a lot, and a lot of you are wondering, how do I get started? It is so overwhelming, and I don't know where to start or which problems to focus on. So in today's video, I'm gonna break it down for you guys and give you the guidelines you need to get started with lead code. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, awesome. So I'm logged into my lead code account and the first place that you should go if you're really struggling on where to start is the top interview questions, which is this link right here. So this is where you want to go and um, start your journey with lead code. Awesome. So when you're on this page, you want to sort by the difficulty level and definitely start off with the easy questions before you move on to the medium or hard questions. So as you can see here, I have done more easy questions than medium or hard and that's because I want to have a good foundation before I start moving on to the medium questions. So to illustrate this point I created a triangle uh, sort of idea so you can understand. So I'll put that image up here somewhere and the idea is that if you are struggling with medium level questions um, that means it's time to improve those skills in the easy level questions before you move on to the medium or hard level questions. So this is something that I've learned over experience and this is very key when you're trying to do these questions and not get discouraged. The next trick I have for you is to understand what your strength level is in each of the categories um, as per the skills matrix that I created. So you need to understand which areas you need more help in um, than other areas. And to do this, a good way to understand that is fill out this strength level column and you know identify which areas you're strong in, which areas your strength is medium level, and which areas your strength is low level. So in the areas that your strength level is low, those are the categories that you need to work on and solve more problems in lead code um, to get better at those areas. Because remember, you can be a good developer, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be um, excelling solving lead code problems because it's maybe something you don't do every day or something that you've forgotten how to solve or just the types of problems that, that don't come across in a daily work environment. So always remember that you can um, improve the parts that you think are, need more help um, for your lead code preparation or your overall software development career. So after doing a few of the top interview questions and then struggling and then filling out the skills matrix and know which areas you need to work on, you can come back to lead code and look at these topics right here which organizes those categories that are identified in the skills matrix. And feel free to add more to the skills matrix as well. Um, and if you want a copy, let me know in the comments below, send me an email. Anyway, so once you've identified those areas, you can come back here and you can go ahead and click that topic and pick questions from that category that you want to improve in. Okay, now let's say dynamic programming is something you want to improve on and in the skills matrix you have identified this as a um, area that you need more work in. So what I can do here is go to the dynamic programming topic and look at all the questions that are available from there. Awesome, so now I'm, I'm in the dynamic programming category, but I don't wanna get overwhelmed with all these questions. So what I'm going to do again is I will sort by the difficulty level and start with the easy questions before moving on to the medium and hard questions. See here, I have started off with the easier question and focused on building a good foundation rather than try to pick medium or hard questions from this category. The next tip I have for you is to avoid the lead code trap. Now I'm going to be fully transparent here. I have fallen into this trap multiple times and I have gotten myself out of that trap and that is when you see the question and then you don't uh, brainstorm how to solve it or you don't really um, know what to do and then you don't give your brain the time to think of 
or come up with any solutions and then you jump directly to the answers. And I faced this problem when I was looking at hard or medium questions and I just like did not know where to start. And that's when I realized I needed to build a stronger foundation on those specific categories in the easier type questions before I fell into the leap code trap, which is when you look at the answer right away and then you copy that idea into your code and then your code runs fine. You should not get any satisfaction if you copied the answer. The next place to look at um, if you're still struggling where to start is to do the leak code challenges. So currently we're in November and there's a leak code challenge going on. And what I love about this challenge is they already have the structure built in where they start off with easier questions in the beginning of the month and then they move on to the medium and harder questions as the month progresses. So they already have this model built for you in the coding challenges. So I think the first coding challenge that I did was in May and that helped me. I found that very useful and I found that um, it really helped me understand, okay, so if I need to do these types of medium level problems, then I should warm up with these types of easy level problems because they organized it in that way. Okay, again, I'm being very transparent here. So this is the challenge that I did. And you can see I haven't completed every single question, but I did um, a lot of them and this was very good practice for me. And you also get points for solving the question on the day it's released, which is a good incentive for you to accumulate some leak code coins if you wanna you know, use that to pay for premium or buy some of their t-shirts and cool stuff like that. So yeah, so this is my uh, May lead code challenge progress. So because I haven't done all the months, I can't speak for everything, but I did find that the May one was very useful for me. The next tip I have for you is to use the tree visualizer if you feel that your brain is overloaded with what the question is asking and you can't really see the tree um, or if you make changes to the tree, you're not able to see those test cases visually. The next tip I have for you is to keep going is to remember that you need to focus on quality and not quantity. Because yeah, it is better to do more problems, but if you don't understand um, how to solve a specific type of problem, no matter how many problems you do, if you're given a problem that you haven't done before, you may not be able to solve that problem because you don't have that uh, good quality foundation in your learning. Focus on the problem that you're doing and make sure you understand it forwards and backwards to the point where you can solve that problem in your sleep. If you improve yourself at least 1% every day, that will have a compounding effect on your results and how you are able to solve things and how you're able to get better at things. So you can apply this same idea to leak code even if you don't see the progress right away as you're starting. Um, you will, your brain will actually um, improve over time as you do one problem and then the next problem and then the next problem and that has a compounding effect on your learning. Um, as you keep doing leak code problems and as you um, keep progressing in your software development journey. And this idea comes from the book Atomic Habits. So if you are more interested in knowing how to um, solve leak code questions effectively or how to get motivated, I do post a lot of content about that on my channel. So feel free to check out these two videos right here. And I hope you all the best for your leak code journey. And I hope this video helped you um, get started on leak code. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more leak code problems and more algorithms.